Welcome everybody. This is an exciting time for us. It's uh, the fourth of the series, Getting Your Brain Cyberfit. It's the Acronis Virtual Conference, broadcasting worldwide from everywhere, different time zones and everything. And the topic today is actually how office workers can reduce stress and improve mental health strength. These are truly interesting times. I mean, it starts with me. I, you actually hear a moderator talking with the German dialect. I'm sorry for that. I don't know why I got the honor to be actually the host of this event. I'm uh, working at Acronis and I support our sales teams with major customers and uh, on specific projects. And uh, I think I got the honor to be this moderator today because I did a stellar performance in the Acronis CyberFit uh, tai, chi, tai Chi class, uh, which is on a regular basis, a basis and it's really fun. These times are truly uh, interesting and challenging. We all know that we talk about it every single day and we see what's happening to everyone around us. It's, it's not only that our kind of work is adapting to the new normal. It's not only that um, how we thought about our life is changing. It's not, it's not normal that our whole re uh, relationships that we do are not possible very often, that families uh, have a very hard time because kids cannot go to school Everybody needs to work from home. It's also that we're gonna see the stress. It's seven months and we see that it becomes more stressful the more time uh, passes by. So therefore actually in the series, uh, the CyberFit series from Acronis, we wanna make sure that everybody stays mentally healthy, that everybody is on top of his physical health and that not only your physical health and your mental health is safe, but of course, that during all those interactions in the virtual world, your data is being protected and the secure and secured. Now, first, let me, uh, let me share some housekeeping rules. First of all, uh, your microphones are muted. Um, that means uh, you are not able to actually talk. However, you can raise your questions through the Q&A sessions. Um, you will receive an email with the, with the event, uh, with the recording. So um, that's easy to be shared also with your friends who are not able to join. And during, during the Q&A sessions, you actually, your questions will be answered. So please feel free to use the Q&A button and ask as many questions as you want to have. Our lineup is uh, terrific. It's like uh, Sergei Belusov, founder and CEO of Acronis. Then Nora Rosendahl, she's the COO at Hintza. And Ray Seifo, he's the president of the fighting operation of the Professional Fighters League. And uh, before we go actually into the agenda and the rest of it, uh, just a disclaimer to make sure all of the information provided in this presentation is for informational purposes only. It does not constitute for providing mental health advice and is not intended to be a substitute for independent professional psychological or psychiatric advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Please keep that in mind. Nevertheless, I am very sure that you're going to get a lot of benefits out of these uh, presentations and speakers that we're going to hear. The first one, uh, Sergei Belusov will talk about um, how Acronis is actually adapting to the pandemic. And he has much to tell you about this, also about his personal life, and it's very in insightful and interesting. Then Nora takes over and tells us how office workers can reduce the stress and improve mental strength. And then we turn to Ray, and Ray is actually talking about stress and recovery in martial arts, which is a different perspective that you might see. So we actually look at the whole topic from different angles. And last but not least, we're gonna have a Q&A session to answer your questions. So please keep in mind, use the Q&A button, ask them, um, they, will be, they will be handled shortly. And so with that, it is my pleasure actually to uh, announce Sergei Belusov. Um, Sergei is the founder and CEO of Konis, but also the, uh, uh, the founder of the Schaffhausen Institute of Technologies, a research-led institute. And with that, Sergei, the floor is yours. Well, you're glad to present this presentation here. I uh, assume that most of people who are listening are Acronis partners. There are probably some Acronis customers. Uh, this is a unique year in which I have an honor to present this presentation to uh, the virtual audience is probably right around um, 100 times. And so uh, it doesn't change that much. Uh, but here is us, Acronis. We are a leader in cyber protection. 
um, uh, what we do is artificial intelligence powered cyber protection, cyber cloud, and cyber platform. Um, we are lucky to be based in Switzerland and Singapore at the same time. That is especially playing very well in the current time of coronavirus, but we are committed to um, grow fast and to have a presence in every business, at least every large business, and to actually be globally local, to be present with our protection services, partners and infrastructure in every significant territory in the world. Um, the world is uh, rapidly uh, becoming digital, especially with um, the quarantine, everything is digital. Digital workloads are mission critical, but extremely fragile and they need protection, but it's um, uh, actually uh, becoming very complex to protect the workloads because you have um, the rapid growth in edge and endpoint computing and this edge and endpoint computing is not only massive, we're talking about tens of billions of devices today and hundreds of billions of devices in 10 years, but also located in all kinds of difficult locations. Uh, it's also very expensive to protect because there are so many devices and there is so much data. Uh, you also need to worry about security at all times. Cybercrime uh, incidents are uh, maybe 10 times more per device and number of devices is perhaps 100 times more and so you have cyber incidents happening to a person um, at a literally thousand times more probability than in the past. Uh, privacy is a major concern because without controlling your privacy you cannot control your um, future and with digital data, data can easily be copied and your privacy can be um, um, penetrated and you can be manipulated to do things which you would otherwise not do. And especially with COVID, we learn that um, IT is a very basic human need. Without IT, we cannot actually buy food uh, or control um, our work or do anything right now. So it has to work at all times. And that relates storage, that relates com to compute, that also relates to the network. We believe that the only solution to those protection is integrated and autonomous cyber protection. And this is our mission to protect all data applications and systems. We believe that you have to uh, uh, protect it uh, from uh, all these five vectors, safety, so nothing is lost, accessibility, and everything's accessible from at all times, privacy. Uh, you can give and take away rights to access your data and your workloads and you can know who have access, authenticity, then no workloads can be modified and you can always find out uh, if modification happen and return back to the original. And also, of course, security protection against all actors only if you get the integrated and autonomous cyber protection. You can do it easy, you can do it cost efficient, you can do it secure, you can keep control in the hands of customer or partner, and you can stay reliable at all times. Especially with COVID-19, we all learn that there is a lot of similarities between biological and computer threats. And in both biological and computer threats, you need to do all of these five parts to be protected. You need to do prevention. And that's what we're mostly doing to control this pandemic. You need to do detection. Uh, without detection, you cannot figure out who is sick. You cannot figure out who is who can be quarantined. You cannot figure out how to prepare your hospitals. You need to respond. And that is something which um, um, luckily uh, the health systems in the world are learning how to do and they're managing the disease much better than in the past, even though the number of the people sick is um, still high. There is many less deaths. You need to do recovery. And that is major challenge with COVID-19 is a, uh, need for hospital beds and um, the long time of recovery, the shorter the recovery, the easier the pandemic would have been. And you need to do forensic because without forensic, you cannot do prevention, detection, response, and recovery. You would not know what happened. This is very much the same for digital threats. And we believe that not only you need to be protected from all these five vectors, safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security, a chronic cyber surpass, but you also need to be doing on all of the vectors, prevention, detection, response, recovery, and forensic, and only that way you will stay protected. So that is what we do in Acronis. We provide Acronis Cyber Protect for customers. 
through Acronis Cyber Cloud, which is used by our partner service providers, which is our main um, uh, audience and which is uh, hopefully uh, most of the people on this call are somehow members of the partner community. Uh, Acronis Cyber Platform, which is mm, something which can be used by um, engineers, software engineers at partners or customers to modify cyber protection and enhance it or to modify cyber cloud and enhance it. It's all uh, is running on top of a chronic cyber infrastructure, which is global local infrastructure, which make it possible for us to offer very cost effective, very reliable, very easy to use services in every territory, in every country in the world. And, and it's uh, combined with a chronic services to help our partners with mind share, with expertise, with reach, and, and specifically CyberFit Academy to uh, help our partners to be better cyber protectors. With that, I wanted to stop on several important concepts. So one part of um, our vision and one part of our concept is a chronic cyber engine. And uh, what we believe is needed is to make um, information technology infrastructure much more autonomous and cyber protection much more autonomous. Today, we have, say, for example, 5 billion workloads in the world. And, and this uh, 5 billion workloads, uh, out of them, probably only around um, you know, several billion, maybe one billion is properly protected. And um, today, the productivity of a single technician is uh, maybe around 500 workloads um, um, at, at a maximum. And, and so to protect uh, uh, you know, one billion uh, uh, workloads, you need two million technicians. Two million technicians is a lot of uh, technicians, but you know it's not impossible to imagine. Now, in ten years, we're going to end up with uh, maybe around uh, fifty billion important workloads, and out of them, not not just twenty percent, but perhaps uh, fifty percent or even hundred percent would need to be fully protected. You cannot possibly imagine that you will end up. Uh, getting um, 50 million technicians. There is not so many IT people in the world. There is only 10 million IT people right now. The number of them can grow, but not that dramatically. And so we are building um, a chronic cyber engine to make protection much more autonomous, both on the standpoint, from standpoint of security, safety, accessibility, authenticity, and privacy, but also from standpoint of management. So we believe only that way we can actually provide the uh, um, required productivity where you will be able to manage not 500 workloads per technician, but perhaps um, 5,000 or even 50,000. And only that way you will be able to react to cyber threats uh, quickly enough, react to cyber threats in real time. Because for example, on this call, even in case the downtime will be just 10 seconds, it will be quite a dramatic difference. Then another thing which is extremely important, and it's also part of our commitment to, uh, to the uh, uh, productivity and quality of protection is um, integration between different technologies which are part of Acronis Cyber Protect, but also third party technologies. And so we are announcing and promoting our internal technology called Acronis Cyber Bus, which is an integration technology inside Acronis Cyber Platform, which consists of Cyber Mesh, Cyber Sync, Cyber Workloads, open APIs and <clears throat> the benefit from it is that you have all of our products running as a single product with a single UI, with a single policy, and even the features which or capabilities which are missing in our product can be taken from the third party products and integrated in such ways that it will look seamless. This is super important to keep the productivity level uh, high for service providers and keep the quality level of protection very high. Now, the product which we just released, Acronis Cyber Protect, we're sort of still in the process of releasing it in different um, uh, editions. We released it first in March, then we had um, a final release on the cloud edition in uh, May, and we are releasing a classic product early um, September. And we just recently announced uh, new editions and new pricing for the product is, um, um, is, is uh, multiple sense. So first of all, uh, this is our product of the future, and it's um, it's uh, not um, a different product. It's the same product as Acronis Backup, but it is a superior backup. Every partner of ours who run Acronis Cyber Backup is already effectively running Acronis Cyber Protect. So the only difference is that they did not enable certain features, but the 
code which they run on the client and on the server is the same code. And with that code, you have much better backup in the form of Acronis uh, Cyber Protect because not only it has better reactive protection and, and some of the features in Cyber Protect are not available in backup, but it also have active protection with things like continuous data protection and various uh, active protections against security threats and proactive protection where we are preventing um, the failures, uh, even without the need to stop them or without the need to recover. In addition to that, it's a product which is designed for integration. It has in, 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 in it security, it has in it cyber protection management, it has in it um, um, uh, some other important features, but even um, when you don't use those features from the product, it is, um, uh, it has open APIs and it's truly designed for integrations. Also inside Acronis, we are committed to uh, uh, integrate with top 15 uh, RMM, top 15 PSA solutions and uh, top five solutions in every uh, language and every geography before the end of the year. Again, we believe the integration is super critical because it is all about profitability and productivity of um, uh, our partners service providers. Uh, we also believe that it is uh, by far the best uh, replacement for traditional endpoint security. It is already a product which is better than competition. Uh, and with the features which are all coming before the end of the year, such um, advanced features like uh, zero trust assessment and management, endpoint detection and response, data loss prevention, uh, network security and email security, it is simply the most comprehensive product. Um, uh, in the large enterprise, you might need multiple products to, um, uh, uh, to actually provide full security. Some um, research have told that there are on the average 74 vendors, 74 softwares which are used by large enterprise to ensure security. Um, in the large enterprise, you can afford to um, integrate those products manually with the help of many um, IT people. Inside the MSP business, and especially inside an MSP for small business, you still need the same level of protection, but you cannot have uh, multiple vendors because that kills your productivity. And it also, more importantly, it kills the quality of protection. And so because of that, we provide all of this functionality in a single product. With that, we have a number of unique capabilities, both in terms of protection. For example, uh, one thing which has been a real hit for us in the past months is we have built an artificial intelligence-based HDD hard disk failure prediction tool, and it has already predicted number of failures of hard disks. We also have some absolutely unique capabilities on security. We have by far the best functionality against phishing and against uh, ransomware, which is the most common and most dangerous if security threats today. And it is also extremely efficient product. It allows to do many of the, um, uh, many of the uh, expensive from the performance standpoint procedures on the side of the service provider, not loading the customer yet providing the same value. With that, um, again, uh, what is important for service providers, we recently announced new um, uh, pricing and new edition. Most important part is uh, there is an essentials edition, which is, uh, super affordably priced protection with essential backup capabilities and with cyber protection management. We also have a now edition for my beloved audience, which is web hosting companies, which is super cost efficient edition. Uh, we also include cloud storage in cyber protect, which effectively makes um, it um, uh, very cost effective uh, for any size of the workload, even with uh, per device prices only. Um, the uh, prices are super competitive. So for example, Essentials Workstation is um, uh, of starting from uh, 63 cents per month, uh, which we believe is the best in class price for the uh, uh, security solution. But remember, Essentials is not just a security solution. It also includes um, uh, some elements of RMM and it also has um, a backup. And, and not only, but we are launching um, uh, this with uh, 33% discount for six months. Uh, again, we believe that it's important for us to help our partners, you to make money. And uh, the more money you make, the more money you can spend to grow.
you know, just uh, one more time, I, I want to emphasize it in every opportunity that cyber protect is not just uh, uh, backup plus security plus management, plus file sync and share and plus notary, but it is actually a better backup. And so on this slide, which I'm sure the presentation will be available for you after this call, you see uh, this uh, five sins which are available in cyber protect only cloud storage, which is included, continuous data protection, which is incredibly useful for security threats, group management of devices and centralized plan management and HDD health feature. Those features are not available in cyber backup. So if you are a service provider and you're listening to this call, what you really should do is to go to cyber protect as soon as possible. Uh, another thing which is a very important focus of this year is cyber uh, services and cyber fit academy uh, that is both cyber protection services which we offer to partners and to customers through partners cyber protection operating centers we now have three cyber protection operating centers we intend to productize it and sell uh, cyber protection operating centers to um, uh, our customers to our partners we believe it's very important that this is not security operating centers only, but is the centers which monitor all kinds of different things which can happen to customer infrastructure. It really doesn't matter why the infrastructure is not working, whether it's because there is a hurricane or whether it's because it's a ransomware attack. We also offer professional services, development services, AI services, and um, we also uh, invested 5X more in Acronis CyberFeed Academy which now will offer in most modern LMS way trainings. For this year, we have already trained uh, one and a half times more people than we trained for the whole last year, and we are accelerating. We intend to grow a number of people trained and certified on Acronis platform, on Acronis cloud, and Acronis cyber protection by the factor of 10. Another big thing which we are going to push, especially on Acronis Summit, in Acronis cyber community, where we'll have multiple levels, um, including exclusive club for large partners. We are not doing any business direct. All of our business is 100% uh, two tier or one tier uh, through partners. And um, definitely we can do nothing without partners. This business is unique. It's very sticky and it, it's very high margin. So we can afford to spend enough on making this experience for our partners the best, not only from the standpoint of the quality of products, not only from standpoint of margins, but also from the standpoint of a quality of experience. With that, I wanted to talk about several things which I've heard from partners just uh, recently. So first of all, uh, we uh, have internally decided, especially through COVID-19, that we um, will become much more transparent about quality and the uh, 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 general inclusion of features in the roadmap. We are increasing our investment in quality assurance several times. We are um, uh, applying our autonomous expertise to make uh, quality assurance better. We're improving um, architecture and process for updates. That was a lot of complaints from our partners about the fact that updates are painful. This will become much easier over the next several months. Uh, we are also announced that we are launching premium support services. Premium support services are available at cost um, and for the highest level partner account manage management. Uh, and by the factor of uh, uh, almost uh, three to five, uh, where we are dedicating uh, many less partners to a single partner account management to maintain the relationship better. Uh, the important initiative which will launch by Summit is also joint events and joint marketing services available at cost, but also available to large commitment partners for free, where we help the partner to generate demand whether it's a cloud GST where they would generate demand to sign new partners or whether it's a service provider where, where it's about new customers. And we're also committed to provide equally deep support for all kinds of workloads. Today, we support about 25 different types of workloads, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, uh, you know, different applications, different virtualization platforms. Uh, we intend to triple it um, over the next 12 months and in intend to provide equally good support so for example, today our cyber protection is amazing on Windows and it's pretty good on Mac, but it should be amazing on both. And so these are housekeeping items we believe are important. That's what we hear from partners all the time. Uh, now I have only a few more slides. So one slide is just about uh, uh, cyber, uh, about COVID-19. Uh, that is what we uh, have um, 
done. We, uh, of course, um, invested a lot in office hygiene. Now it's a huge debate. Acron has spent a lot of money on its offices with about 1.5 thousand employees globally. We also have some room for growth. It's not so clear how people will be using offices in the future. Uh, we also provided um, um, guidelines on how to get to office and how to eat near offices. Many of our people have uh, in different countries kept coming to office. Um, uh, some of them do not have conditions to work from home. We, of course, uh, uh, killed all the uh, non-essential business travel and um, uh, unfortunately were able, we needing to stop most of physical events. Uh, we have invested um, a lot in uh, office and home office um, in, in order to uh, make our employees productive. What we've seen in our employees, they have grown productivity by almost 20% on the average in the company. So it's again, another question about the offices. Uh, and then uh, uh, we, uh, of course, now measure the performance much better. We didn't need to measure it before because it was physical, but we have a lot of improvements on measuring productivity. In addition to that, um, uh, we uh, remind our employees and our partners that the fact that COVID-19 seemed to be getting out of our way uh, is not really that good idea to relax. So first of all, you need to uh, remember to save and make money. Uh, one of the major challenges of this pandemic is not the biological risk of it, but the financial risk of it. And this financial risk um, is rather unpredictable and there are many different implications which will come in the future. Of course, in sectors like IT, like software, we do not see that much uh, downside but uh, there are many sectors which are deeply affected and these sectors are our customers. So they will stop paying. If they will stop paying, the effect will spread to us as well. Uh, maintaining hygiene is generally a good idea. It's actually quite difficult during the, uh, so during the COVID-19. I've seen everybody um, uh, um, you know, washing their hands at all times with sanitizers. I'm going out, I'm now in Italy and I see that nobody's doing it anymore, but it actually was always a good idea. Taking care of your health, I think people will talk about this after this break, but um, ultimately uh, during this um, COVID, we've learned that if you are generally healthy, uh, you are generally safe. And so it's uh, much important to stay generally healthy. It's important to stay prepared with supplies. It's always good to have supplies against pandemics. This is the first pandemic. There will be many more pandemics in the next 10 to 20 years, it's just because the travel is so often and because so many people commu communicate with so many people, this is a great ground for viruses to spread. And another thing which is super important is to stay cyber protected. It is clear that with the pandemic, uh, the cyber crime uh, got a big boost. Uh, the criminals cannot make money selling drugs um, or doing illegal gambling, but they can do they can make money doing cyber crimes and we see significant growth in new types of attacks. And so the attacks on the infrastructure of your customers, but also on your own infrastructures, it, it will happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And in some of the attacks, you would not be able to stop. Even though you would be as sophisticated as Garmin, Garmin was down for 10 days, but recovery should take minutes, not days. And it's really easy if Garmin would have used Acronis, as corny as it sounds, there would be no problem. You know, Garmin is particularly dear to me because Garmin is based, uh, is headquartered in the same city as us in Schaffhausen. Not so many people know this, but to stay protected, you actually need to use uh, something like Acronis Cyber Protect, or you can combine the functionality from multiple tools, but that could actually be not only more expensive but harder, but may actually not even work very well. So with that, um, the last thing I want to talk about is our initiative to cyber fit everything. So first of all, we want to cyber fit workloads and the cyber fit workload is a workload which is protected from all the five vectors of protection, safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security in all ways, prevention, detection, response, uh, recovery, and forensic. Uh, we want to cyberfeed customers, of course. Cyberfeed customers is not just about single workload, it's about overall IT deployment, cyberfeed partners uh, through our partner program, making them ready to offer cyber protection in the best possible way. Cyberfeed countries and territories, 
So that is uh, where we have enough uh, presence in a, in a country and territory where um, we can protect customers and enable partners the best. And of course, we will promote it through CyberFit Sports with our ever increasing uh, commitment to our sport partners, companies like Williams, Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool, and so on and so forth. Um, with cyber protection, every customer and every workload in every place in the world uh, need us. And, and so with sports, we have a huge reach and we will share the sport programs with our partners. With that, I will pass to my uh, more interesting colleagues, which, which will talk about your health. Thank you very much, Sergey, uh, for the insights, also for the outlook and what we are doing at Acronis in regard to CyberFit. What you did not mention, Sergey, was that you are actually uh, doing what you own, what, what we preach, basically, because in this pandemic, um, you were very healthy. Um, uh, Sergey uh, ate healthy, he slept well, and you can see it also in his body. So the next speaker um, is Nora. I'm quite sure that uh, Sergey is using some of the lessons uh, that Nora will tell us uh, about you can, uh, what, what it is about stress and how you can recover better. It will be followed by, um, by Ray uh, from a martial arts perspective. And uh, with that, I just going to go to Nora, Chief Operating Officer at Hinza, Hinza Performances. Actually, Hinza Performances is coaching companies that also that serves athletes and corporations. She's actually well known for her work in Formula One. Uh, actually, in the past five years, I think 96% of the podium, podium positions, uh, meaning one, two, th position one, two, three, um, they were actually covered by Hinza or presented by Hinza clients. That's, that's, very, that's very impressive. And besides her work, she's actually working on her doctoral uh, dissertation at the Atoll University about the future of knowledge work. And part of her writing and work has already appeared in the Financial Times. So with that uh, last, last fun fact that you have sent to me, Nora, and which is quite impressive, any of you guys are interested or have a special interest in the heavy industry, um, she worked uh, as a consultant, focusing on Australian mining and North Sea oil drilling. And with that, Noah, please take it away. All right, thank you, Alex, for the kind introduction. I also did underground tunnel construction, so I, I am a big fan of heavy machinery. And thank you for having me here today to talk about stress and mental strength, which is probably today more important than ever. I've been working on these topics for 10 years now, and this is what drives me, making work meaningful. So this is what drives me, making work meaningful. Why? Well, because work matters. We adults actually spend on average one third of our waking time at work. And for most people, that's more time than we spend with friends, family, or alone. Unfortunately, modern work life isn't exactly on average making us feel better. In fact, stress and burnout have been labeled the health epidemic of the 21st century. Almost 80% of managers are concerned about the impact of stress in the workplace. And six in 10 knowledge workers say that they're badly affected by stress. And COVID isn't helping. The WHO calls out stress and anxiety as actually the main public health impacts of COVID-19 so far. And the UN says that we now see decades of neglect and underinvestment in mental health. Now, I can't fix COVID for you, but hopefully I can today give a few nuggets of insight to help you cope with the stress it's causing. I'll talk about three things. Firstly, the three typical pitfalls office workers fall into when responding to stress. Secondly, I'll talk about what happens in our body during stress, because even though we usually talk about stress quite negatively, physiologically, stress is actually a positive reaction. It's our gas pedal that helps us get things done. Third, I'll talk about recovery. That's our brake pedal. And having that break actually allows us to step harder on the gas when we need it too. But I'll start by telling you a bit about my personal stress story. This happened about 10 years ago and I had a blackout. My world went dark. I was wide awake, but suddenly I had no idea where I was. When I looked around, I realized that I was sitting in a taxi cab abroad 
outside a hotel and it was kind of dark. The driver had turned around and he asked, where are we going? I had no idea. Was this my hotel? Was it morning? Was it evening? Was I going to work, going to the airport? What city was I even in? In that moment, I realized that how I had been living and working was not normal. Now, why did this happen? I was a few years into my career. I worked in management consulting and I loved the work, the projects, the people, the travel. But I also had a need to prove myself. I was young. I was often the only woman in the room. And I ended up working way too much, about 80 hours per week, and I became exhausted. But I realized it before I hit the wall, and that moment in the taxi was one of them. So I started making small changes, lunch outside the office, no phone at night. So nothing big, just a bunch of small changes. But it worked. Over a few months, I dropped my hours from about 80 to about 60 which maybe doesn't sound like great improvement, but way back then, it was for me. So far, this is a typical near burnout story. But what made it interesting and what I personally reflected on a lot later is this. I did not tell anyone what happened. To everyone else, I kept pretending that I still worked 80 hours per week. I would tell the team in the evening that I'd finish work at home, but instead I would go to the gym, have dinner, and after that I would press send on the last work email. Now, why did I do that? Because I simply felt that it was easier for me to fake it than to admit that I couldn't keep working at the same pace. I did not want to appear weak. And that says a lot, not only about how I thought personally, but also about what we idealize in the workplace. We all go through periods of stress and most of us respond quite similarly. Here are the three typical reactions to stress and pressure. The first one is work harder. We put in more hours, we press on. And this is evident in the current COVID situation too. A Harvard study actually monitored 600 knowledge workers in the US every second week after COVID hit. And they noted that even though these people saved time from commuting, the average working day actually increased by 10 to 20%. Secondly, to work harder, we often start neglecting our physical needs. I'll go to the gym next week. This is actually a textbook example from the 12 stages of burnout, where stage three is neglecting your physical needs. Thinking, yeah, sure, I can sleep one hour or less, or I will exercise when this is over. And stage five is actually even more interesting. We start revising our values. We think, well, right now, work is my number one focus, or actually, my hobbies are not that important to me anyways. And this is bad for so many different reasons. And I'm glad that, Sergei, you have, have managed to have a more healthy, uh, healthy lockdown. The third pitfall, though, especially if someone asks, and I did this, is that we respond, I'm fine. We deny there's a problem and we put up a brave face. This one is especially problematic for people with high drive and ambition, like executives, because these people often have an uncanny ability for focus. But it's like, like Srini Pillay of Harvard says, this strength actually becomes a weakness because that focus and stamina can help you push through, but then you're suddenly blacked out in a cab. And one of our coaches said it well, that eventually whatever we do, our bodies will come and hunt us down. So I started off saying that stress is positive and I know this hasn't been exactly upbeat so far. So let's take a step back and look at stress in the body. Stress is actually one of our most primitive responses and it's essential to our survival. We often hear the evolutionary description, right? Imagine that you're in the jungle and the lion meets you. When you imagine that situation, you can almost feel your pulse pick up, your breathing become deeper, and your muscles bracing for action. The stress reaction is what helps you mobilize your body and mind so you can run, climb up a tree, crawl into a cave, or whatever it is you do when lions attack. 
in modern times, we're not attacked by lions, except for maybe Ray uh, when he's fighting. But the reaction is the same. It helps us deal with difficult situations at work, a tight deadline, or like me this morning, not finding my keys right before I have to run to the bus. So let's look at this part closely. Physiologically, what happens in your body during a normal stress response is that your body and mind react and we see that upward slope right there. That's your sympathetic nervous system or the gas pedal. It helps you react. Then the parasympathetic nervous system kicks in and you get down from your stress high back to your baseline. You recover and restore your resources so that you're ready to tackle the next stressful situation. Then there's also a bad or abnormal stress reaction. We react to a stressor, but we're not capable of shutting the system down. We don't get back to our baseline. We're unable to relax. And we start accumulating the effects of stress in our body. And this is what becomes chronic stress and leads to all the negative effects that that brings with us, with it. And interestingly, this is actually what separates humans from animals. If you've ever seen an antelope run away from a lion, when the lion gives up the chase, the antelope sort of physically shakes off the situation and then it goes back to eating grass on the savanna. But we humans, we have the ability to think and that makes it possible for us to stay in this stress state and have that abnormal stress response. Even after the situation has passed, we can become stuck. Where did the lion come from? Who let it loose? Why did it attack me? So the stress reaction in itself is positive, but staying in that stress state for it and the long-term effects are what makes us ill. And since the stress reaction is positive, it can be used to achieve superhuman performance. This is again, very typical. Um, most have never used stress positively. And, and I think that also talks a lot about how negatively we, we view stress in our modern society. But if you can do it, it can actually help you out a lot. We have an example here. So at Hinza, uh, like Alex said in the beginning, we work a lot with Formula One drivers. And when a Formula One driver sits down in the car to start a race, their eyes are fixed on five lights, which are lit up one by one. And when they're turned off, it's go time. This is not a calm state for the drivers. Their bodies are filled with adrenaline. It's a stress state. And that actually allows them to be razor focused, have unusual energy, and be ready to give it all their power and strength. And what happens in the brain in that stress situation is that the body is actually sending more signals to the brain per unit time. It can even feel like time is slowing down. And that's why people who have, for example, near death experiences often say that they see it happening in slow motion. That's your body sending more signals to the brain so that you can react better. Now in modern work life, these situations can be uh, giving a presentation like I'm doing now or trying to negotiate or close a deal or having a performance review with your boss. And what's even more important than, than what happens in the stress state, it's what happens after this, the recovery. There's a lot of talk about resilience, but what really made it visible for me is actually this phenomenon from sports called supercompensation. When you train, you break muscle tissue, uh, and that's what we have the downward slope. That's stress in the body. But the strengthening of the muscle actually happens during recovery. And if you don't get enough recovery, it doesn't matter how much you train, you end up worse off. The red line here, which ends up below your starting level. But if you get sufficient time to recover, then you end up at a level above your starting point. That's the green line, which is what we call supercompensation. Now, the exactly the same thing is true for mental work. So Hinza is involved in large research projects where we're following over 3,000 knowledge workers over multiple years, measuring them on 500 variables to understand what really drives well-being and a good workplace. It's still in progress, but, but here's one glimpse. This is a, what's called a structural equation model, and I could talk about these numbers and stars and arrows all day, but what you really need to know is this. 
Firstly, all of these relationships are statistically relevant and significant. And secondly, these four brown boxes on the right are what's called main mediators. So when we feel as workers, as office workers, when we feel meaning, autonomy, relatedness to others and competence, that's when we get a workplace with low burnout and high engagement and thriving. So what can we individuals do to get that? Well, the first thing is recover, mental recovery. When we get enough of it, that, that boosts all of those four uh, brown boxes, meaningfulness, autonomy, etc. The second thing we can do is watch our working hours. Now, this is an interesting one because it behaves paradoxically. In the short term, you see there's a green arrow at the bottom from working hours to all of the, the brown boxes. In the short term, working more actually boosts our sense of autonomy and meaning and so on. But when we work more, uh, and when we work more, it gives us this sense of productivity, and that's good. However, it's a deceptive feeling. It's almost like a drug, because there's also that red arrow which goes from working hours to mental recovery. The more we work, the less we recover. So one thing this tells us is that the more high performing you are, the more you have an inclination to pile on the hours, the more you should actually watch them. Because the secret to high performance is this, experiencing a state of positive stress, being focused and engaged, and then following that with effective rest. Andrew Huberman is a neuroscientist and professor at Stanford, and he says that the brain obviously has many, many different states. But if you want to crack high performance, this is it. If you can figure out these two states, being focused and engaged, and then following that up with effective rest, you will perform well and be well. So if there's one picture that I hope you remember from this talk, this is it. Simple, right? Well, it's often simple on paper, but not in practice. And our society drives us to productivity, but stress, social media, and distractions make us quite bad at recovery. So we need to rediscover how to recover. There's a lot to talk in, in terms of recovery, but I'll take three quick highlights. Mindset, body, and mental uh, detachment. First up, mindset how we approach the slowing down process. And here's an example. Um, the Formula One racing season was forced into shutdown with the rest of the world in March. Our coaches work with these drivers and their job was to design a new training routine. But most of the initial work was actually mental. How do you get these superhuman performance machines to slow down? And they essentially um, did three things. First of all, they help them accept the break and cope with the uncertainty. Secondly, they revise their goals from outcome goals like races and lap times and refocus them on process goals. So how much to train, when and what. And third, they help them see the positives. And a striking story for me was when one driver said a few weeks into lockdown that this is probably the first time in my life that I'm more of a father than I am a Formula One driver. And that's a good thing. Now, as normal people can learn a lot from this, I will admit that I expected this autumn to be a return to something of a normal. Now, that has not happened. Uh, I've needed to do this loop again, accept the uncertainty, revise my goals and find the positives. We office workers need to help our body recover. That mainly happens during sleep. And we know that alcohol, large meals, caffeine, caffeine, all of those are bad for sleep. And I'm not going to repeat that here. Instead, something a bit more practical. Front load the fun. Us adults often have our best time in the nighttime. For obvious reasons, there's work, there's kids, all of that. But what I try to do is to front load that fun. So have the last cup of coffee after lunch, meet up with friends for breakfast or brunch. And I don't want to become the poster girl for day drinking, but I am going to say that a glass of wine with lunch is better than a glass of wine with dinner from a sleep perspective. 
third, although we talk a lot about sleep in media, we've talked less about mental detachment. And detachment is your mind's ability to let go of work in your free time. So if you work an eight hour day, go home, but keep checking your email, that may be actually worse for you than working a 12 hour day and then actually putting a pin in it and actually resting. There are many tricks, but the important aspect is how you make it a ritual. So how do you very practically leave work and go home, especially when we're working remotely? Personally, I write down the following day's to-do list. I take a walk, even though I'm working from home, I take a walk around the block, I listen to music, and then before I open my front door and again to go back, I ask myself this question. Who is the person I want to be behind this door? I have two kids, four and one. And I think, do I want to be that frazzled mother who's annoyed and stressed? Or do I want to be present for dinner and bedtime? Now, that doesn't mean I'm never annoyed or stressed, but that micro moment when I think it over helps me be a better person. To round things off, uh, a simple rule of thumb. Uh, I talk about the three R's of recovery. Every day, you should try to do three R's, run, read, and rest. It doesn't mean you have to go out for a jog every day or read a book, but what you should do is do something physically stimulating, like going for a walk to the gym, doing yoga. You should do something mentally stimulating, the read part, do a crossword puzzle, uh, read a proper article and not Twitter, write in your journal. And thirdly, you should do the something which is anti-stimulating, meditating, prioritizing sleep, or taking a long mindful walk with a friend. So if you can remember two things, and I know that's a stretch, this is the second one. So to summarize, stress is a normal reaction that helps us react to important situations. And that stress reaction can make us superhuman. It helps us focus and give everything that we have. And the recipe for high performance is cracking two states, positive stress and effective rest and toggling between those two. And to do that, we need to rediscover how to recover. So start with your mindset, accept and see the positives of slowing down. Help your body recover by front loading the fun and having coffee, alcohol, and heavy meals earlier. And for your mind, make detachment a ritual and really figure out how to leave work worries at home. And if you take away one thing, remember the three R's, run, read, and rest. Thank you very much. Um, what an insight, what an interesting, uh, what, what interesting insights. I mean, we received already lots of questions actually from the audience. About you and also Sergey did receive a couple of questions. Keep them coming, all those questions. We will address them later on in the Q&A session. And if you, if you do have a time issue, we obviously will respond afterwards as well. Um, and with that being said, I look forward to uh, Ray Seifo. Ray Seifo is a true mixed martial arts legend. He actually won six MMA titles in six different weight classes. Um, he he was uh, winning versus the most famous one. He is one of the stars in this kind of category. And not only that, he actually transformed also and became the president and co-founded uh, the WSOF, which is now the president fighting operations. And he's the, uh, the, the, he's the president of the fighting operations at the professional fighters league. That is what I wanted to say. And when Noah talk about, talks about super super focused and talks about uh, stress levels i can imagine being in a cage before a fight that's quite a stress level ray is it uh yeah absolutely alex and thank you for that <laughs> massive introduction um but after nora i don't know how i topped that <laughs> um but yes i mean uh, alex is going to be obviously nora is a an expert in this and uh, alex is going to be controlling the um, slides for me, um, but uh, just to top off uh, what Nora was saying in regards to uh, stress, obviously stress is a normal reaction that the body has when 
changes occurred. And this happens a lot in fighting where there'll be uh, a new opponent, where there'll be a new date. And of course, stress affects us differently. Uh, some people, it's, it's mental, some people, it's physical, um, some people, it's emotional. And some people, the rest, you know, all in the above. And so um, I'm going to start off by going into our first uh, slide or our second slide. And just wanted to give some insight on um, what it takes to be a mixed martial artist. Obviously, the training is very important and the type of training that you do. Um, and with mixed martial arts, you need to know how to wrestle. You need to know how to uh, submit somebody, uh, which is uh, jujitsu. Uh, you also need to know how to uh, be a stand-up fighter, uh, meaning you, you got to learn how to box, you got to learn how to kick, and so on. Um, all these different disciplines, uh, are, you know, makes you a complete mixed martial artist, and it, it helps a lot with the game. When I first got into mixed martial arts, I, I come from a boxing, kickboxing background and didn't really, you know, didn't really think too much off the ground. I thought my stand up was good enough to be able to uh, keep the fight standing. Obviously, I was taught a lesson real fast that by a good friend of mine who was a 170 pounder uh, who was able to take me down and hold me down. And I was actually kind of worried a little bit because these are deep waters that I've never swam in. And so, um, I, you know, I, from there, I had to really learn how to wrestle and take jujitsu classes and whatnot, um, which then helped me with uh, martial arts. Um, so just on this, this uh, you know, I'm not sure if everybody knows what a Hall of Famer is. A Hall of Fame is probably the best way to describe it is, uh, it's like winning an Oscar. Uh, all your peers uh, are all in agreement that uh, you've done all the training, you've competed at the highest level. Uh, and for me, I competed for 25 years, and which is a very long time to be able to compete. Um, but, uh, you know, these are things that uh, in, it takes to be a complete mixed martial artist is boxing, kickboxing, uh, jiu-jitsu, and wrestling. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of you know what all those are. Uh, MMA stands for mixed martial arts. And, um, you know, uh, learning how to uh, incorporate all these different arts um, helps you with life in general. Um, and, <clears throat> allows you to kind of continue with the day, allows you to have a clear mind, which is very uh, helpful when you're dealing with stress. Um, in, in the beginning, Nora talked about how the body reacts to the different changes in, um, in, in stress. And it, again, like I said earlier, it affects you mentally, physically, and emotionally. Um, and of course, you training is something that uh, helps a lot with that. I mean, just the physical training. And that could be anything. It can be uh, a light jog. It can be a walk. It can be hiking. It can be um, just anything that allows your mind to, and your heart to smile. Uh, because sometimes when, like for me, sometimes when training gets a little bit, um, too hectic or tiring because, you know, uh, we spend, as athletes, we spend roughly four to six hours a day training six days a week. And so um, we understand the physical side of it and then dealing with other stuff uh, also. Um, you there? So I lost you there. Um, and then we, when we go on to uh to the next slide uh which is training and you know uh sometimes when you get when the promoter uh, calls you and says that uh, this is the person 
I would like you to compete with because it's the date uh, that in itself is stressful. Um, and so um, to deal with that, uh, obviously I've learned this throughout the years is by um, scheduling your day, uh, having um, your day laid out um, and getting rest. Um, and sometimes, you know, sitting down, obviously you got to sit down with your team and talk about what that game plan is going to be and so on, uh, getting ready for that opponent. Um, in training, uh, Alex, are we in the, uh, yes, in the training, um, you also got to watch uh, what you put in your mouth. I mean, uh, a lot of fighters, when I say a lot of fighters, especially the lighter weight guys. I competed in the heavyweight division um, where, a lot, uh, well, later on part of my career, I competed in the, late, uh, in the heavyweight division, but a lot of fighters down from light heavy to featherweight or straw weight, uh, there's a lot of um, dieting and, and things like that that's needed to, to get prepared for the, the actual match. Um, I remember watching a video um, of a fighter, I think it was Sean Sheriff, who said that he doesn't eat for taste, uh, he eats for performance. And so your diet is very important, uh, sleep is very important, and of course, um, all of that um, stresses you out as well. And so it's really important um, that you talk to people uh, within your circle, uh, your family, your friends, your teammates, uh, that helps with stress also. Um, and uh, with, with training. Then, uh, you know, again, when you, when you look at physical condition, uh, you got to be physically ready for a match. Uh, and I generally put in 12 weeks of camp because the first two weeks you focus on how to get your, you know, to get your body back into those aches and pains and that in itself can be stressful. Uh, but once you go past that two weeks, then you have the 10 weeks to really get uh, physically ready for, for the match. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, if you look, if you look where the world is at right now, um, COVID-19 uh, hasn't helped anybody and physical training Again, like I said, that doesn't necessarily mean me personally. I like to go into the gym and uh, move around with my teammates, whether it would be sparring or hitting pads with my uh, coach. Uh, for you, it can be anything. It can be, like I said, hiking. It can be biking. It can be uh, do something that is fun, training that is fun. It can be a game of tennis. It can be a game of basketball. Uh, but anything that's physical, that allows you to, you know, just clear your mind. Um, it also be good for you when you relate it into uh, your the workforce, uh, your office, and whatnot. Um, so the physical training is very important for us as fighters, uh, and and also once you know, for I find that when I'm physically ready for a match. Uh, my mind is so, so much more sharper uh, in terms of uh, what I see because, you know, the game is so fast in there um, that, it, it's a, you know, with the blink of an eye, you could miss something and that could mean the end of the fight. It could, you know, um, and then you're out of there. <laughs> um, so that's all, you know, preparation for training, uh, mindset and whatnot. Um, and again, like I said, uh, with Norris talking about uh, spending um, time to uh, ha having a little bit of fun and enjoying uh, the things that you do, don't get caught up in, uh, in the moment. And of course, some of us, uh, I mean, we all get uh, that from time to time, but it's really important to um, step back for 15, 20 minutes, if you're feeling something like that, to uh, just reflect and take uh, more control of that situation. Um, 
and then so Alex said, oh, yep. I was so moving on to fight week, um, which is the next slide, Alex. Um, <clears throat> fight weeks uh, also brings a lot of stress because you got to deal with media. You got to deal with um, jet lag. Uh, you got to deal with weight cutting. Um, and sometimes, you know, jet lag, it's, it's, it's a rough one because uh, they say that it takes two weeks to kind of uh, get acclimated to wherever, especially if you're fighting overseas. And so um, you don't have two weeks. You, you literally have four to five days. And so you got to get your rest in. Like I said earlier, these are things that is crucial part of your training. Um, you got to get your rest in and then you got to get acclimated to the time zone. Um, on top of that, you got to deal with uh, press, photo shoots, uh, autograph signing. Um, and then of course, the weight cut. Uh, the weight cut is a, it's a, it's a killer in itself because, um, and especially, well, I guess this is where we ask that question. How many, uh, how many pounds do you think that a fighter has to cut? Um, or, you know, fight day. Some have to cut 25 pounds, some have to cut 10, um, and some 20. Now, cutting 10 pounds, and I've seen this happen, uh, you know, with so many fighters, is that 10 pounds is a good cut. 20 pounds is a tough cut. Um, and that, not only it's physically stressful on the body, it is also very mentally stressful because, um, and especially when you get to that last pound, that last pound, uh, it can break you or make you. Uh, when, you when you get on that scale and that, and that pound and you're on weight, it's probably <laughs> sometimes with most fighters, when you make that weight, 50% uh, of the, the fight is already done because um, weight cut is sometimes harder than the fight in it, itself. And so um, it's, a, it's really tough when you have to cut. And then again, when guys have to take short notice fights, which um, a lot of fighters have done in the past, uh, and will continue to just to, you know, get that opportunity and um, to fight for PFL. <laughs> um, you know, and, and there's a lot of uh, things, you know, when you, when you, when you look at uh, um, cutting weight, uh, it's so stressful that uh, I said earlier too, where you have to, uh, if you feel that pressure, um, talk to somebody, talk to your friends, talk to your family. Talk to your team work, you know, your team at work, um, because um, talking about it helps um, releases that tension. Uh, I find that when I'm um, getting ready for a match, um, especially this fight week, um, I, I voice everything because for me, um, the more I am consciously in control of what's happening, uh, the better I feel because it allows me to fit even the pressures of fighting. Um, it allows me to, um, because your you know, subconscious mind is going to play with you a lot. And um, when I talk to my peers, I mean, to my team, um, I'm letting things go and allows me to stay focused. Um, and a lot, and what it tells me is that I'm in control of those elements um, leading up to the fight. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, you know, again, like I said, the pressures of dealing with um, TV, um, because when you're half naked in front of millions, millions of people, that's a that's a lot because you you know you got to deal with uh, the person that's across from you um, that's there to literally um, beat you 
um, and to win that fight. Of course, to win that fight, he's got to be able to submit you, stop you, um, and um, take control. Uh, so your job is to stay focused. Um, just like how we're dealing with this pandemic, you got to stay focused. You got to put your work in a little. Um, and like I said, the, the physical training uh, allows you to um, not only um, stay sharp in your mind, but also it physically helps you when you're dealing with stress. Um, going to uh, slide five in the cage, um, dealing with opponents. And sometimes you got to deal with um, uh, when you're dealing with fighting um, or, or a particular opponent. Um, that's stressful in itself too, because you might be getting ready for one person um, and that person doesn't make weight um, or that person gets hurt in, during that fight week, uh, then your mindset has to change. Uh, you got to, you know, dig deep and, and think about all the good things that you've done in training, how training went and, and, um, and being positive and staying positive. Um, here's an example of, I remember uh, when Mark Hunter and I fought, the game plan was set out. This was the game plan. Uh, we were going to make him miss and make him pay. And of course, that's not the game plan that Mark had in mind. Uh, Mark had in mind was um, to come out and be, you know, a complete beast in the, in the ring. <clears throat> and so... <clears throat> Right then and there, I had to adjust and think on my feet. And so that ended up being a fight where um, a lot of fans tune in. And it's, it's funny, though, because when I go around the world, um, the fight that they mainly talk about is the Mark Hunt fight um, and how that was fought. And <clears throat> um, so... Um, I guess, well, you know, at the end, it's about uh, understanding yourself, understanding that you can talk to people um, about stress. Uh, so wrapping it up, um, get rest, make sure you get rest, plan your day out. That's going to help a lot with stress. And that doesn't matter what you do. That could be in the office, that could be at, at um, <clears throat> on vacation or whatever it may be. Um, plan your day out. Uh, like I do when training sessions, uh, get your sleep in, get rest, um, and of course, talk to people that uh, you know that they actually care and love you, um, and that would help. And I hope that helped a lot, uh, or helped some somewhat. And um, I think we are having questions later on. Is that correct, Alex? That is correct. Um, but yeah, that sums it up. Again, uh, understanding that Stress is a normal reaction that the body has when changes occur. Uh, once you understand that, you'll be able to deal with it uh, consciously, and that helps you also feel a lot better. Plan your day out, get your rest, and talk to people that care and love you. Thank you, everybody, and thank you to Cronus for the opportunity. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much for those insights into, uh, into your sport and also what you have to deal with and where the stress level is coming from. So let's start off the Q&A sessions. We received a couple of questions uh, to our speakers. I'd like to actually invite Sergey and Noah back on stage, on the virtual <laughs> stage. And uh, I start... Sergey, do you hear me? Yes, yes, I hear you. Noah, you hear me as well? Yes, perfectly. Ray, you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, perfect. Okay, let's kick it off. First question to Sergey. Why is it not possible to have cybersecurity without backup anymore? A technical one. Uh, because uh, the <clears throat> just like with uh, real viruses, there are viruses which can be stopped by your immune system and by your security, but the bad guys are constantly making new viruses uh, they are constantly finding new ways to get into the company. They are now able to combine artificial intelligence, social engineering, uh, email collaboration tools, social networks uh, with written viruses. And so <clears throat> uh, 
from time to time, uh, if you want to stay productive, you will step into uh, the virus and the virus will uh, make your machine broken, will encrypt your data or will, uh, uh, will uh, uh, convince you to do something you didn't want to do. Um, and so you will have to then recover. Uh, and even in case it is about fishing where perhaps recovery is not as important, uh, if you um, even didn't need to recover, you would need to do forensic. You will need to be able to go back in time and figure out what happened to uh, your machine because you will need to figure out how to configure your machine or your network or your server uh, in such way that this would not happen again. Uh, modern uh, bad guys are quite sophisticated. They don't attack you uh, sort of just like that. They get into your computer, your mobile device, your network, and they sit in and they slowly, slowly, slowly establish presence. And then they observe your behavior. And then at the right moment when you're most vulnerable or you're doing some important transaction, or they see there is some event which is coming in. For example, in case of Garmin, they have to update maps every, um, uh, every month, every 28 days, they have to provide update of the maps. Garmin is used by all the planes in the world for navigation, almost all the planes. And so the attack was structured in such ways that uh, Garmin eventually had to play around some because otherwise they couldn't update the planes. And they wouldn't have updated the planes. That would be a major liability uh, for Garmin and a major problem, of course, for Garmin customers. Yes. So again, it's uh, something which happens over a period of time. So you have to do forensic to avoid it because if you don't do forensic, even though you recover, uh, even though you pay the ransom, they will just wait and do it again and then do it again and do it again. Thank you, Sergey. Um, no, our next question goes out to you. Interesting one. You, you talked about the three R's, right? It's like uh, run, relax and read. If I had one hour to spare, someone asked, like, where should I put it? Um, on, on sort of running, reading, or uh, sleeping. Um, well, it, it obviously depends um, on, on where your sort of baseline is in, in all of those. In my experience, though, people tend to neglect the rest part very much. They don't sleep enough. So that's usually um, uh, where you should start. So getting more rest in. Now, depending on if you need to sleep more, if you're sleeping under seven hours, you should probably put your extra hour there. But if you're sleeping over seven hours, then it's more about do you detach better through exercise, so the run part, or do you detach better through the mental stimulation, so the read part. So it really depends on those, on, on where you, your personal preferences are. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ray, there's another interesting one for you. It's like it actually is related to your different job functions. Um, what is actually more stressful now? I mean, being like an MMA legend going in the cage and having a fight, or is it being a president uh, of operations of a professional MMA league? What is like working in the office? What, how do you see it? I think um, being a fighter and then um, getting prepared for a fight and being in the cage in front of millions of people uh, it would always be more stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think being a fighter has actually helped a lot to deal with those. Uh, you know, I think anything else outside of the cage or the ring, uh, it's a lot easier. It's minus stresses versus being in front of somebody that's trying to take your head off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Sergey, question, question for you. If you have an <clears throat> antivirus and a backup, is it enough for cyber protection? Is something missing? Uh, well, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, it is a combination uh, of uh, this uh, uh, five sins. And so it's not just backup, it's also privacy management, it's also authenticity management. Um, it is also um, making it, I mean, ultimately everything related to any kind of protection can be accomplished by limiting your um, a, a, a ability to do anything. So for example, if you lock yourself in a safe, you lock the safe in another safe, 
and lock that safe in a basement, which you lock with uh, 10 doors. And then in that case, you are very, very protected, but you cannot do anything. Okay. And, and so um, in order for you to be able to be productive, uh, you need to uh, actually uh, uh, be able to be uh, protected while not limiting your ability to execute. And so, so for example, that is because of that we're offering as a part of our solution, file sync and share, because you have to be able to share files, all files, but in such ways that you share them without losing protection, which with a lot of file sync and sharing solutions, you can share files, but then you lose privacy and you lose uh, safety and you lose security. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. many, many things to create protection. I would think we are combining an acronym cyber protect just about 10 tools which you would need to use otherwise to accomplish the same. Thank you. It's using the same tools now that it's on my call, it's not about the fact that you pay 10 times and it's not about the fact that it's harder to configure. It's about the fact that it's impossible to configure because they're all different tools. They're all not designed to work together. And so it's about the fact that you end up being not protected if you use 10 tools. Thank you, Sergey. Coming no, I back to your question, you see, I'm not going to let you speak. It's like, um, if you <laughs> want to choose between three things, read, rest, um, and run, but imagine you need to choose between 25 cents. Imagine that Nora will give us a, a, a requirement that you need to do 25 cents to feel good. Nobody will do it, right? It's just impossible to combine 25. Three cents, you're already challenged. You want to choose one, but uh, you know, 25. Very true, very true. It also come back, it comes back to Ray when he said that in the office, it's not as stressful. Obviously, he wasn't in your office yet. Um, uh, Noah, question to you. Um, how do you think, does physical activity in the evening help to improve stress resistance better than physical activity in the morning? Okay, good question. Um, so there are two things at play there. Uh, on the one hand, exercise in the evening can help you detach from work um, and help you sort of unwind and get, get out of work mode. So that would say that you should do it in the evening. On the other hand, um, doing exercise in the evening may disrupt your sleep, which makes it really difficult for you to get into deep sleep, especially, and that sort of worsens your stress reaction. So there are good sides and bad sides to it. Um, I would say it's very personal, it depends on your schedule. So wherever you can get that one hour or half an hour or 20 minutes of exercise in, you should take it. Just don't make it too too heavy in the, if you do it in the evening. Thank you very much, Noah. As, and, and, and Ray, here comes an interesting question for, me, for you about your co uh, opponents. And uh, the, one of the audience uh, mentioned two component, uh, opponents. One is Krokop or Mark Hunt. Which one do you prefer to fight? Uh, both of them. They're both <laughs> great champions. Yeah, no, they're both great champions. Um, they're both great fighters, and so, yeah, no, both of them, which I have done both. I've fought both of them. Okay. And what is your, do you, do you use an, another sport to actually relax a little bit more, like, like golf, archery, and chess as a form of relaxation? Uh, absolutely. Um, I'm not a big golfer, but um, that's because I'm not a good player, but there is the opportunity that, uh, it's presented to me whether, you know, my friends want to go to Top Golf, which is, you know, just hitting the, the golf ball as hard as you can. <laughs> um, uh, you know, that's relaxing itself. Um, I find that when, I, and here's a, you know, a fun fact is that with training, you know, when I'm in training, the, the, the music that I, that I listen to is very upbeat. And then when I'm heading home, um, the music that I listen to, it could be opera, um, and that in itself is very relaxing. Thank you very much for all your input and uh, your, your answers. I'd like to actually highlight a couple of more things that are coming up. Um, first of all, this is part of our CyberFit series you know about. We already had a couple of them. This is really helpful. It's not, not helpful, not only helpful, for your data protection, your, your security, but also for your mental and health fitness. And I hope you have seen that in this, in this conference today, you have seen many lessons 
uh, to take on and actually to improve and also work with the, in these kind of uh, unusual times. On September 3rd, we have a how social is impacting your mental and physical well-being. We will, we will actually hear about the impacts. We've already seen something uh, from Nora from the Harvard Review, um, what impact it actually has. On September 18, it is about how individuals and teams can design their remote work to boost their performance. Remote work needs to be at the best level in order to actually come forward and uh, to bring forward the productivity. And on September 30th, it's actually the topic is the signs of change habits and how to create it yourself. Um, and the next slide, you're actually gonna, I'd like to point out that we're going to have our Cronus Global Cyber Summit 2020. Unfortunately, we cannot do it physically. Everybody understands. But we do it virtual, and it's free. And you're going to have inter interesting speakers. You have uh, partners. We have customers. You have, uh, you have case studies. And there's also the possibility to interact. So please make sure that you register, uh, register. And there's a lot to learn in this series as well. And last but not least, we'd like to point out we, we also are standing for something good in the world. Uh, the, the Acronis Cyber Foundation stands for a lot of things. Um, we have uh, Emergency Relief Fund, which is actually helping the school communities. You know, we, we're building schools. We're actually also helping inmates in, uh, inmates in Singapore to actually go back to society. We help veterans. Uh, we help migrants in Switzerland. We do a lot of good things. And we'd like to point out that this is actually a good way for you also to do something good in the world. And if you see those kids and how they smile and how they profit from them, please keep that in mind. And with that, I hope that you have, you had an interesting uh, two and a half hours, uh, one and a half hours. I hope that you take, can take something with you. The speakers were inspiring. Uh, Sergei, Nora, and Ray, thank you, thank you very much for doing this. Uh, lots of things to take away with. I hope it will all help you in your life, in your societies, in your families, in your work. And uh, just stay focused, watch your mental health and be productive, but watch your mental health and your physical health. Thank you for joining us today. See you next time. Bye-bye.